Welcome to Energy Stew. This is Peter Roth, your host. And I'd like to ask you, is, is this the freest time of your life? <laughs> Don't you feel like there's just freedom all around you and it, the life is just ringing with freedom? Yes? No? What's up? Well, we're going to find out about this freedom thing because we're gonna speak with the author of a book called Freedom is Your Birthright. So we're entitled to freedom. So we're gonna find out how that entitlement works. We're gonna, we're speaking with the author, Dr. Drayvon James. Drayvon, welcome back. Welcome back oh, to Energy Stu, you've been here before. I have, it was a pleasure then, I'm sure it'll be a pleasure again. It's great sure, to be well, that will be very free about uh, how we feel about it. <laughs> That's gonna be our play on words. Today. Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> but our feelings have a lot to do with our freedom because we're, we can feel however we choose. Yeah. And, and so much of your book is really about finding that place in you that's okay anyway. And it's hard, it's really hard to be that way in this age because we're, we're hit with so many powerful negatives and confusion, you, we could call confusion a negative. There's so much we don't understand and so much disagreement and divisiveness and anger. So where is their freedom? Oh, I'm so glad we're starting here. And I wanna just backtrack just a moment you mentioned about entitlement, right? And, so, and oftentimes we think about that, you know, we're such an entitled group of people, but I would submit that um, freedom has a huge amount of responsibility of which most of us will not take ownership of and therefore choose to live a life of um, self-imposed slavery, meaning that we decide whether or not we're free indeed based on external conditions, which, um, you know, and as you said, there are so many external conditions which uh, help to support a narrative that no, we are not free to feel good. We're not free to our own independent thought about subjects, right? Because the collective feels another way. So really this book, um, Freedom is Your Birthright, <clears throat> deals with internal freedoms as opposed to external freedoms. It's so funny when I wrote this book, my son who's now um, in college, I was the first person to read it. And I think he was in middle school at the time. And he said to me, he, he said, mom, I read your book. I really like it. And this, you know, he's a bright kid, straight A student. He goes, but I gotta tell you, I don't feel free to do whatever I wanna do. Somebody tells me when to go to bed and what to eat. And, and I thought, you know what? There are gonna be a lot of adults who have that same perspective, right? Somebody tells me when to, you know, when to show up at work. Somebody tells me, you know, what side of the street to drive on, what color, you know, the light needs to be before I can go or stop. Someone tells me how much taxes I'm going to pay, right? And so we could get caught up in that and then say, no, no, I'm not. <clears throat> right? And it's a, it's a mental thing because how many people turn themselves into uh, expert, uh, um, expert victims? you know, and they live in the pity party of life. <laughs> I would think that the vast ma uh, majority of us do, Stu, because our society, um, we, we support that, right? We support uh, going along with, you know, from the time you wake up, most of people in, in the world, in the United States even, mostly, I guess, wake up to an alarm clock, right? And if they wake up to the news, you know, there is the news um, telling you what you feel about the weather today or what, or what you feel about there being a lot of cars on the road, you know? And there's this, we, we keep feeding this uh, fear monster, right? Which, in, which has us embrace the fact that I am trapped. There are limits on me, right? Um, I, can own, I cannot be happy about where I live because of the political climate. I can't feel free and safe because of the stock market and a number of things, right? Um, I tell you, I stopped watching the news on a regular basis oh, when I was in my 20s and someone asked me why I did that. I said, because I was a consultant and I traveled a lot independently <clears throat> and my day started really early in the morning, sometimes two, three o'clock in the morning to get on the road by myself. 
And as a woman in the 20s, I started noticing that I was becoming fearful because I was I had a diet of the news. You know, I, I was on the road a lot and I listened to talk radio when 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 I was listening to talk radio and it, it wasn't really positive stuff like your show. You know, it, you know, it was what's going on in, in the politics today. Well, when I wasn't listening to that, I was listening to the local news and it was making me this individual that was really becoming enslaved in my own mind. All right, we can be oppressed by the world around us. And it is oppressive. I mean, there are terrible things that we could be afraid of if we choose the philosophy of limitation. And that, and, and, uh, because fear has, has been huge in this world in the last couple of years. And, and so how do you get out of, you know, looking around you and feeling like you're doomed or you could be doomed if you didn't hide out in your closet all the time. Yeah, I think the, the, the easiest thing to do and probably the most effective thing to do is to have a gratitude practice. And I'm not just talking about, you know, lip service at oh yeah, I'm grateful for my health. You know, people say that, but then they, you know, so I'm talking about what, what I call active gratitude practice, where you engage your entire body, your senses and everything. And uh, what I do, a simple practice that I do, is I take a card, a little index card, and I write three things down that I'm grateful for. I love that. Right. But, but the, yeah, it's a little more intense intentional than that it's three things that happened yesterday because you know the mind <laughs> like i like that even better because right. it, it really then each day you know that if the next day you have to write down three things to be grateful for you want right. to create them <laughs> and, and on the flip side of that card on the so that's what i do and on the flip side of the card right after i do that for yesterday right i write down three things that i'm grateful for today that have not yet happened right so Ooh. i set an intention Right. And so that right there changes my mindset because we spend a lot of our time dwelling on the past, um, how we were wronged or how we were, how we made mistakes and we're fearful that we're not perfect. Newsflash, you're not, I'm not, it's okay, we're okay. There is no perfection amongst us. And so we spend a lot of our time in the, in the painful past, right, or the fearful future. So that helps with that. For me, you know, I write down Hey, what, what I'm grateful for happened yesterday. So I've taken care of that past. When I want to when I want to dip back into the into the past with my mind, I got that index card to jolt me to the present moment. And when I'm in the present moment, I'm like, okay, this is what I'm creating today because we are create. We create. We create. Right now, you're creating this wonderful podcast. So we create and we can create on purpose. We can be intentional. So that's a great way to help break that fear cycle that we're in. And it's right. not to be um, con condemning or shaming or to put guilt in anyone because we all we're all in that and we're in the what do we call the matrix man <laughs> i can't think of a better word for it but we're in that and our constant homework if you will is to make sure that we stay aware have tiny practices that support our being conscious in the present moment and and the ability to reframe things in a more successful way more me, yeah, right. More useful, right? Yeah, more. Yeah, because I'm thinking, like I'm thinking that you know, today I was very happy to, even though I have a cold, and I'm, oh no, what are, you know, and then I said, but I'm gonna be interviewing Trevon later today, <laughs> and really, and it it really just was such a, a you know a blessing that yeah. to look forward to, and 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 so I think we need to you know, recognize, you know, you call it being grateful. I call it recognizing blessings. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and what else will I be blessed with today? And and very often, I, I think we have to understand the nature of serendipity and synchronicity and trust it, that life works in ways that if we get out of our own way, life comes out of left field and, and magic. and. And, and so many people aren't open to magic because of their um, downtrodden expectations. 
Yeah, you know, I love that you use the word magic. I know people are afraid of that word. So I want to say we're using it in the most positive, most universal way. But absolutely, it is magical what we can do. And right. just to take it one step step further we're talking about being creators right we are we we can decide to create ourselves as as victims or as victor or victorious right victorious we have that power but one step further is that we can decide today it's um, to be a creator of service what is it that we want to give right when we start and i don't mean you know uh, you know there used to be expression when i was a young child in church they said give to it hurts yeah, wrong place, right? <laughs> because we want to make sure that we're giving from a place of abundance, right? So what do I have to give? Is it my smile? Is it, is it, you know, what kind of service do I have to give? You know, is it encouragement, right? What is it that I have to right. give? Just in a think, and think of loving things. What yeah. would I love to give? Right. And, and put it in the context of giving from love. You know, yeah. how can I make people feel good today? You know, yeah. who can I come across that I can extol? <clears throat> I, mean, I love one, to, I love to help the, people feel good. Right. And one of the first people you need to start with is yourself, because you can only give what you have to give, right? So if you show up and you're not in a space, take time for that self-love and self-affirmation and self-awareness to get yourself to that level. And sometimes, quite honestly, we're human. We're going to have the whole spectrum of emotions. That's what healthy people do. And sometimes it's just time to, you know, st take a step back and say, I'm going to need focused time on myself today without shame, guilt, or condemnation. That's the space right. that I'm in right now. I need that so that I can prepare myself to go out and be that vessel of giving. Not, not everybody is really designed to be self-nurturing. And, and um, so, for instance, my, my wife is a wonderful self-nurturer. She meditates three times a day, does yoga. And I look at that and, I, and, and it's like, no, uh, but I'm not designed like her. I'm designed that my happiness comes from productivity. And well, that's self-nurturing, though, Stu. I, I think yes. maybe sometimes it, it looks different for all of us, right? So for some people, they can meditate, they can sit for hours. Other people can need to be walking and in motion. Other people need to be engaged. So it's it's all self-nurturing, but we're all different selves. Part I of love the same that. Whole, yeah. Right? It's yeah. very important to, to um, identify your gifts and 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 be grateful for who you are in this world, different from anybody else, in ways that uh, you're proud of. And we all have things to be proud of. Maybe there are a lot of little things that add up and maybe some big things. And, and we forget about them because we're dealing with the next struggle. And so we gotta really have that perspective. I, right now I'm at a stage in life where I'm very, um, um, nostalgic, let's say, uh, and looking back, and and I I can tell you that throughout my whole life, I I I never felt that I had it easy. I always felt that, you know, kind of overwhelmed by responsibilities, and am I going to be able to, you know, bring, take care of my family well enough, and are my kids going to grow up well enough, and and can I be there in ways that that are needed and and when i look back now i'm i'm it worked out magically it didn't work out because i was smart enough or strong enough i mean i certainly was um resilient enough <laughs> but um you know it was like being a, a pinball in a pinball machine but um eventually you know uh, the game, uh, you know, went well, uh, unbeknownst to my expectations, because um, I, I worry about things. I'm, I'm a worrier, and, I, and I, I believe that my worrying really helps me do things right. <laughs> but uh, my wife looks at me and says, I don't know why you've been so successful in your life when you worry so much. And, and I, it's like, no, I don't know that I couldn't have been successful without all this worry. And yet it all worked out so magically in ways that I feel so blessed. And 
And I really am at, at this stage. I mean, I hope to live a lot longer. I'm trying to. <laughs> I, I hope to live to 100. But I'm about to turn 80. And I really am excited about it. And, uh, and but, but looking back, realizing how um, a warrior like me got everything to work because of magic, not because of me. Oh, you, Stu, you just did a whole, uh, like a whole chapter of teaching in that. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that because, it's, and especially um, about to be 80, I would have never thought that, but you have a lot of wisdom, right, that comes from life experience. And what I'm hearing there, and I, I want to stick with this word magic, and meaning no offense to anybody, but I absolutely love that term because what I'm hearing is that if you worried or if you didn't worry, you still did the work. You did the work and magically things worked out. And so we get to choose, here's freedom is our birthright. We get to choose how we're gonna have this life's journey. Make no mistake about it. Our perspective is our choice. That is our choice. Right, I'm, I'm lucky that I'm resilient. And, and right. you know, I always say that in all the battles I've been in, and I feel like I, I've been having to, be a warrior all my life, not only a warrior, but a warrior. Warrior, and, love it. And I'm basically in in my battles. I've been I've been the last man standing. <laughs> Einstein said something that I really use as a um, baseline of a philosophy in my um, everyday piece is that every day when we face the world, we have to make this decision. And the decision is: Do I live in a hostile universe? or do I live in a loving universe? Meaning is the universe out to get me or is it out to support me, right? And it is the answering of that question which will determine how we view life, how we do things. Yes, resilience is important, but that outlook is so very important. If we brace every day saying that the universe is out to get me and I have to outsmart it in order to get to my next level of greatness, doesn't mean you're not gonna get to your next level of greatness. It does mean that you're gonna have a very challenging, hard, exterior to get you you know you're gonna you're gonna come against a lot of obstacles because you're bracing from you're preparing for obstacles right. whereas you could say that everything that has that has shown up in my life the good the bad and everything in between the wanted and the unwanted is showing up because i live in a loving universe and it's helping me it's helped me to develop something, to let go of something, to pursue something that will help me get to my next level of greatness. I often say it's like a parent with a child. I know I raised two children. They're um, both in college now, but I would tell them all the time, you know, you may not like this decision that I had to make as the mom. It is, however, the decision I think that's going to teach you the lesson that you're going to need as an adult, right? Yeah, so and that I was can me. choose how to hold it or not. And right. I think so much of it is coming from the wisdom of believing in, in let's call it divine order, that, mm -hmm. that no matter how out of place things feel, no matter what, where we look and there's terrible struggle and limitations, and I think it's all around us, that to understand that it's there for a positive reason. And the positive reason is is the wisdom path and you know and for us to grow through adversity uh, and and add to our light because of that that journey that we're on that is right that's the whole point yeah that's the whole point is growth right and so knowing that everything has shown up to help you and there are going to be life lessons that you can that you're going to have to learn we're all going to have to learn think about that infant right now that mom who's watching her child try to struggle to stand up and he or she falls down for the 50th time this afternoon right what if they said you know what just forget it you know just forget it the, the universe is against me. It doesn't want me to learn how to walk. If it did want me to learn how to walk, it wouldn't be so difficult. No, we're looking for this to help you. To so This is your first lesson in building that resilience, right? And getting in there and learning that lesson, learning how to do this, right? Because you're going to be able to teach someone else. How about that? That's, that's service, right? But you're also going to be able to reconvince yourself that you are magical. 
You are a creator. Right? This is what you came here to do, is to change your perspective, to evolve. Right? But there to come from that place, you, you really have to own that perspective. Yeah. That's why I started off by saying that freedom is your birthright, but it comes with great responsibility, with great responsibility. You need to say, I, I own how I choose to feel about this. And you can, let me just say this. There are people who I've talked to in my life coaching business who have had tremendous struggle, tremendous struggle. Sure. And anybody who heard their story would say, you are justified in having the viewpoint that you have even if that viewpoint is limiting you reaching your next level of greatness, your next level of service. Being justified in having that viewpoint doesn't mean it's the, uh, the profitable viewpoint to have. Well, it's but, about whether or not you're, how you're playing it. Are you playing it as a poor me person or as I'm being challenged and I'm doing my best? Right. Are you the victim or are you the victorious one? And this is how you know, right? If you're telling the story about what happened to you, bingo, you've had victory over it, right? So you want to tell that story as the victorious one, not as the victim. You are here oh, recounting the story of what happened to you. Right. You've survived it. Now let's thrive through it. Let's change our perspective. Let's use it, what it to be the purpose that it showed up for is to instruct and to strengthen you to build that resi resilience so that you can move to your next level of greatness. So you can move to your next level of service. Yeah. And, and so I think that's the point is, is to accept being human. <laughs> yeah. I love that, Stu. And accept being human. Yeah. Right. Don't put the per the burden of perfection. Even you know we're talking all this, and it sounds really nice, right? And, and then we'll hang up and we'll go about our day, and something will happen in our lives that challenges our perspective. We all go through. We're going to have all of the emotions, right? But the more you have a practice of gratitude, intentional gratitude, active gratitude, as I like to call it, the more you have a practice of that, the the shorter period of time you'll spend dwelling in a perspective that keeps you as a victim. You'll rebound really quickly. Your resilience will be there. You'll be able to uh, pick out the uh, the juice from the pits. I say all the time, right? You pick out the juice and say, "Hey, this is what I'm going to use. This is going to be. This is going to energize me to my next level of giving, my next level of service, my next level of greatness." So we we're going to go through that. We're going to have those emotions. We're going to do that hopefully with lovingness towards ourselves. We're going to um, love ourselves through all of that. I, I really do believe that we have a great future in this world ahead, <clears throat> even though it looks very ominous. I, I think that um, we're, humans aren't here to, uh, to mess up any more than we already have. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not here to mess up any more than we already have. Well, we're here to learn, right? Yeah. And I would tell you, I, I, I have um, students, you know, I've been a pharmacist for over 30 years and um, I have st pharmacy students and they all come through the door afraid that they're going to make a mistake. And I tell them, I say, I, I want to go ahead and um, help relieve you of that fear. You will make many mistakes. Right. And it will be okay because that's part of the human experience. And would you be surprised to know that a remedy for that mistake has already been in place. It is for you to take that so-called error, whatever it is, to forgive yourself and then pass that forgiving spirit on to everyone that you meet. But I think if we understand that everything is in divine order, then there are no mistakes. Absolutely, bingo. There are everything is in divine order. There's already been. A, there's already a remedy for that. I already replaced. Well, it doesn't mean it doesn't even mean there's a remedy. It means that the mistake is the correct one. Right. Yeah. Right. And someone told me the other day, uh, maybe a week ago, that uh, mistakes are not made; they happen. Meaning that it's something that just happens. That's it's not something that is right. Right. It just happened. And so I really like that instead of just saying, oh, I own that. Because honestly, to your point, Stu, there is no such thing as a mistake. There's no such thing. Right. right. Exactly. It, 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 it's in divine order. So whatever the mistakes seem to be are there for our lesson plan. 
absolutely, it, absolutely. There's no chaos in the universe. There's no mistakes. It, they're just things that we, with our little human brains, as intelligent as we are, do not yet have information on. We don't. We don't have to have all the answers, but we do know how to successfully play the game of life. You know, in the words of, um, what was her name? Who wrote that book, The Game of Life? But, you know, I love that book. Her name, Florence Schofield Shin, right? And it's, we, have, we have the recipe. You know, we know that it, everything starts with love, gratitude, and forgiveness. Right, but we've so often massaged fear and resentment and guilt. Right, but, but this things. show and you and your books help people become more conscious about it and do a better job. So and hopefully uh, so in a gentle we're really, way. We're really at the, at the end of the show, and I, I want uh, people to know all about. You know, you write a lot of books, and uh, this is just one of many. Uh, and uh, you have a lot to offer. So how can people find out more? Well, I, I have a website. You can find out more there at um, drdravonjames.com and it's just D-R-D-R-A-B for victory, O-N, james.com. I also have an awesome program for women who are um, looking to reach their next level of greatness, whether it be in their health, their wealth, their businesses, or their relationships. And that's called Leaders in High Heels. So it's a dynamic coaching, 12 week coaching program for women. You can join up our free Facebook group called Leaders in High Heels to find out more about us, or you can check me out on the website as well. And uh, my, my radio program, which has moved, we're on a Body, Mind, and Spirit a podcast now, is under the same name, Dr. Drayvon James. Wonderful. It's, it's so great to talk with you because. It's inspiring because you, you really are in this world to help us all. And uh, it's very obvious. <laughs> well, it's great to be oh, here you. with you, Stu. All right. Thank you so much. And this is Peter Roth, your host of Energy Stu at prn.live. I can be reached at Peter at Heart River, H-E-A-R-T, river.org. I'd love to hear from you. And thanks so much for listening. <laughs>